welcome back. I'm here back at the Felix Hartman Show with Daria and Natalia, the two founders of DressX, uh, what I consider the number one digital fashion marketplace, perhaps some of the most incredible builders in both, well, I would call like Web 2.5 because you're building both in the digital fashion space in Web 2 and also in, in Web 3. You guys have so many accolades. I've got a whole list here from you guys will find this in the LMVH Innovation Awards. Uh, Daria is called the Ki Kiev's Fashion Queen Bee by Vogue UK. Daria, uh, both together have 25 years of experience in the fashion industry and so many other things from Daria TV show in, in Ukraine. She was an editor for L, Harper's Bazaar, Vogue. Uh, Natalia, you were a curator at Kiev's Fashion Institute. Just incredible background in fashion. And now you guys are digging into digital fashion. So before we get into the nitty gritty of like NFTs and everything, let's tell a little bit about the origin story from how you from traditional fashion to digital to F3, how you guys met. And yeah, maybe you can start us off. We met many years ago in Ukraine, so it was almost like 15 years ago. And you're right, I hosted a TV show and I was a journalist. So I was writing to all of this fashion media that uh, you've just mentioned and to various others as well. And Natalia was an editor uh, of the media uh, and that was all in like one company. We worked together. Mm -hmm. And while I was traveling to the fashion weeks all around the world and like you interviewing yeah. people from the fashion industry and it was mainly like fashion designers and stylists and different celebrities. I also realized that uh, locally, we in Ukraine, it was back in the days like 15 years ago, 13 years ago, did not support designers, local designers, mm -hmm. the way we should. So that's how we started the project that was called Mercedes Bansky Fashion Day. So mm -hmm. it was the fashion week that became the largest one in Eastern Europe, sponsored by internationally by Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. As all the fashion events back then, all around the world, it was like a special program by Mercedes Benz when they supported the most interesting fashion weeks, yeah. like in Berlin, in New York. And one of them was Kiev, which was very local, but they actually saw so many talents and it was mm -hmm. so incredible. So we basically established this blueprint for some of the Eastern European designers of how they should really build their careers and that international acclaim is really what's important, not mm -hmm. like local celebrities or something local, but the only way in fashion is to be international. And that's yeah. the most uh, important for like physical designers and for any like business person, to be honest. And uh, then when the first war broke out, unfortunately, it's uh, it was two, uh, 2014. Yes, we established the showroom in Paris to sell the clothes mm -hmm. to the biggest stores all around the world, not to be dependent also on the market locally, because obviously it was in such a difficult position. And we really wanted to push all of the designers internationally mm -hmm. and to make their business much better. And through that company, we also learned a lot of how clothes are being sold in large stores yeah. worldwide, how people would love to create the content and without probably purchasing the items. So it was obvious that we are on the verge of like big changes in the fashion industry. So uh, I moved to San Francisco six years ago to do MBA in like fashion business and business, sorry, it was yeah. not a fashion school, business school. And tech, uh, obviously San Francisco is uh, the capital of tech. And back then pre-pandemic, it was like the melting pot for right. everything that was happening in the world. And uh, yes, and then we kind of continued the iterations of digital fashion in 2020, 2020, the pandemic baby dress X was born. Natalia, would you continue? <laughs> uh, no, what I would add is actually um, we will get to the digital fashion mm -hmm. part, but it actually consists of different uh, important parts. is fashion and it's media and it's technology. So uh, we are coming from this background of media and fashion, which is incredibly important uh, mm -hmm. when we think about digital fashion, we, when we build digital fashion. And we actually witnessed that revolution in media when it went from print to uh, digital to all the web uh, media story when it went from TV to YouTube and of course uh, we understood that with fashion uh, something similar should be happening and the latest um, kind of big revolution was the uh, e-commerce and right. e-commerce was kind of a global phenomenon which uh, also changed the fashion industry a lot and uh, yes, through this uh, previous uh, business with wholesale, we learned a lot from the stores and we really saw how, it, how this changes happen on a huge scale. And uh, that was very inspiring. And uh, of course, we understood that definitely the future of every industry is with intersection of technology. So uh, we decided to move into this direction. I'm curious, when would you say was digital fashion born? Was this a result of like social media or did you already have like in traditional, even just in the magazine days, 
where their outfits were completely edited, like photoshopped, or like because that was, I guess, an early instance of digital fashions that never really physically existed. More or less. Yes. Well, yeah, actually, um, it's a number of different factors here. Mm -hmm. And uh, our very, very first um, attempt in the digital fashion world was to take a sweatshirt of one of the designers uh, with a print of hands uh -huh. and um, animate those hands in AR. So mm -hmm. when you scan it, you see, oh, my God, it's recognizing the gestures and uh -huh. it starts like moving and it's uh, a lot of fun. But AR was not there. Uh, right. It was not uh, even on the sam same level as it is now. So, of course, the experience was um, a little bit like funny and not exactly um, what everyone would expect. But uh, that was already a very kind of promising. Mm -hmm. And we understood, OK, that the future, um, maybe it's not today, but it's happening. We should start moving into that direction. And uh, a lot of the technologies, they become commodities mm -hmm. with the time. And uh, it's just important to put it in the right product and to combine it with the right content, right. because this is very important. This is actually the medium and the message and how it is delivered that the technology. So, right. And I think that's kind of what sets you guys a lot apart from other digital fashion companies out there, because I think people sometimes simplify digital fashion. They only think it's a 3D image that's an NFT, but really you guys have an AR aspect in there, a machine learning aspect from like, you know, making it fit different people to, of course, the Web3 and NFT angle. What was like the initial version of uh, DressX? Because I know initially there was like a showroom and you started this before NFTs were even like 2018, I remember, I think you mentioned. Uh, yes, actually, the first, yeah, um, apart from uh, what Natalia mm -hmm. have told you about like the sweatshirt yep. with augmented reality that we tested, we also actually did a kind of digital experience. So experience in the store where we call them uh, fashion Content-driven pop-up stories. Yes, Content-driven pop-up stories. Already mm -hmm. forgot it was four years ago. So when a person could enter the environment that looked like museum of fashion yep. and actually pay for the renting of the certain item mm -hmm. and take the pictures in the professional environment, okay. because like all of us in fashion, we do have access to like photo studios and great yep. photographers, and usually people don't. So we right. really wanted to build this experience for them, like mm -hmm. a photo room, but it was really cool fashion stuff. And we actually started to scale that model, and we did two pop-up stores like that mm -hmm. first on melrose it's like very posh right. uh, and popular uh, location yes in los angeles and second one was in beverly center so mm -hmm. beverly hills and uh, we actually it was uh, we gave an opportunity to people either to create the content or to purchase the clothing so it mm -hmm. was either or or you could do both and we actually saw that people had so much fun they spent more time in the store but then the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and we actually were a little bit tired of all the physical aspect because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of operations cost of goods sold and etc and like the delivery costs and then we were like how we can replicate the same experience without any physical movements like what it can be actually it can be like selling digital items for the photos mm -hmm. so the first like iteration of dress X, because back then the company was called a little bit differently right, and then we yes and then we understood that dress X will be like the dba the product mm -hmm. that um, we are launching because it's completely different as it looked like far fetch we compared it of digital clothing so we yep. opened up with 30 items and the idea was that instead of like waiting for the delivery for the item you mm -hmm. just upload your picture and then you receive that picture back when you're wearing this digital item we still do that it's still yeah. a part of dress act so we call them meta looks mm -hmm. it's like and people use that for pfp to dress their pfps yep. even our genesis drop which uh, is the nft drop is also comes with this utility so basically the utility was always at the core of dress acts because we really believe that fashion in digital as well will be all about wearing things not about like having them somewhere but actually about showing them off and not right. just creating but really I wear it I post a picture I do a video it's so much fun and cool and it's a language and I talk the language of fashion with any of my follower or subscriber etc so that's like from the utility of day one we still keep it we love it but mm -hmm. there are so much more that uh, we see how digital fashion can be utilized and especially in our app with augmented reality that became so much better right. and then with all the other new use cases that we're introducing and we can talk more about them like dressing the avatars and etc etc unless Natalia wants to add something now and just to add that actually we've got to this path of um, ownership of something digital something mm -hmm. not physical 
a while ago, <laughs> pre-pandemic, pre-NFT, uh, and uh, that's pretty clear that uh, owning something in a digital format is sometimes very important mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we communicate online so much and maybe we don't need all the physical stuff in order to communicate certain messages and senses. And that's exactly um, the path we are taking. And um, yeah, that's it, our journey. It, you know, it, it really clicked to me like vision wise when I, 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 be, I observed like kind of behaviors and cultures where people, they don't especially like girls, right? Like you, you buy an outfit usually, and you don't want to wear 10 times, you want to always be seen by the same people 10 times, right? With the same outfit. Now in the past, when you go to one party and then go to a different party, they don't see that. But in the age of Instagram, when you take pictures, you know, um, you almost have an outfit for one image. And I actually, I saw, I, I listened a couple, you know, hours ago to the, the, the Dell podcast that you did, and you mentioned that where so much of fashion nowadays is like for one image almost. And then people sometimes even buy it and they return it. And that has so much impact, whether it's from a, you know, uh, pollution sense with, with fast fashion having a lot of impact and then also from the commercial aspect because obviously that hurts retailers and so it's 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 really fascinating how like digital fashion can play into that angle so with that you know maybe we can break down a little bit like what does dress actually actually entail because i know there's so many angles from the marketplace to the ar and so forth Would you so like yeah basically we see dress x and build dress x as ecosystem mm -hmm. And uh, it is uh, kind of user facing and also enterprise facing ecosystem because we believe that every person will have a meta closet, mm -hmm. as we call it, the wardrobe of digital only fashion that you can actually wear in different uh, spaces uh, online, whether you are posting on Instagram mm -hmm. or if you are going in VR headset and all the use cases between those and mm -hmm. beyond. Uh, so how to achieve that? Uh, we have to have uh, several interfaces for that. Mm -hmm. So of course now all life happens on mobile yep. and this is a device of today. So of course we have mobile app for Android and for iOS because we want to meet people anywhere. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, that's one interface. And um, for example, AR headsets, they already exist, but yeah. it's not like everyone has it, right? right. And uh, everyone has a smartphone now. And AR is pretty good experience on a smartphone yeah. already. So we face uh, this uh, type of audience who is kind of mobile native there. Um, there is um, another emerging and not so emerging use case of uh, virtual reality when you have yeah. a headset and you can be fully immersed in that and that's a really interesting one as well so mm -hmm. um, our collection for avatar store in meta which is available now for instagram yep. avatars mobile facing again uh, will be available soon in vr headsets as well and we already experimented with that uh, for quite a while. And we are happy that now it's like launching on a larger scale mm -hmm. because scale is actually something that is super important. Um, even AR is mostly using mobile, even though there are other devices for that. And um, yes, there are other kind of ways and the other channels how this digital fashion content uh, can be distributed and consumed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we distribute it both off-chain and on-chain. Yep. So when it comes to the on-chain distribution, it of course an NFT, and uh, NFT which comes with the utility. And this is very important for us. And that was our uh, goal from the day one mm -hmm. um, to give an opportunity to actually wear digital fashion for people, not just to own it, but to be able to style it That's on right. yourself. Because this is actually also a creative process. And there is a lot of conversations about like creative economy and uh, everyone is a creator when you put together your outfit it's like you are creative yeah. you do it in a certain way and there is a whole profession of stylists uh, and there is a whole like movement about it so uh, this is really a tool for creation of yourself or your own identity and uh, yeah this tool can be used both of chain and on chain and we just give an opportunity to choose uh, because, uh, yeah, different technologies get adopted with a different speed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we meet our, um, our community, our person, our creator, 
uh, anywhere where they are. With that being said, our ecosystem is available for fashion brands that are ready mm -hmm. to reinvent themselves, that are ready to launch this line, uh, this category of digital fashion. Uh, for themselves, uh, we give an opportunity to enter this uh, ecosystem and uh, yeah, reach this futuristic users. <laughs> And especially with our aim to sell one billion digital fashion items. So we definitely yeah. need to use and rely on all the technologies that exist in the world because we're agnostic to where people will buy our, our yeah. items. The most important is that we drive more revenue, more users, and actually that we are providing a kind of more experiences to people who also believe in digital fashion and we we'll definitely see the future when every person in the world will have their digital closets and uh, their meta closets by dress x we believe yeah. it will be dress x owning Me too. this <laughs> thank you so much and uh, especially given that the younger generation they definitely discover brands in web 2 or web 3 environments and this is so stunning this change that previously you were walking by the street seeing the windows of some brands and yep. you kind of like remember them and then you wanted to come back but now this window is online and uh, the right. fact that some brands don't recognize it it's a little bit like they're missing out as so many brands missed out on the online luxury e-commerce when it just started to be a trend right. like 15 years ago but so many people did not believe in that and they actually missed out that opportunity window when it was easier to enter the space so it's the same that is happening right now with digital goods and with fashion and digital and with this opportunity to talk to a younger generation now while the space is still kind of you can enter it yeah. even like every month it's harder and harder to enter it because like everyone started to go there so we were fortunate enough to kind of predict it with all of our experience uh, that you've mentioned uh, and kind of felt it a little bit in advance so that's why DressX is everywhere and all of those platforms. And we do have a large community, but definitely it's not where we want to be in like three to five years from now, where we want to be like on every device in the world. Right. Uh, but that will come. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, and I think that interoperability is pretty fascinating because last night you showed me the, at the, at the dinner, the, 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 you know, the new head launch, right? And initially I always saw the AR aspect for you yourself as a human, right? But you showed me on the PFP and I think, that kind of makes it even so much more personal because now your outfits can go with you to all these different realities. It can be dressing you on Instagram, it can be in Roblox, right? When you're playing a game, it can be your PFP. And so then, you know, yeah, it, it just allows, I think, people to express themselves and like almost consume their fashion even more like intimately than if it's just hanging your closet, you, you just wear it there. Um, from how, how does that interoperability like kind of work since you know, some things are built on Unreal, some things are built on Unity. So once it's AR, once it's like just a 2D image of an NFT, like what are some of those did the challenges and solutions that you're using in order to even make that possible? Yes. Well, uh, for interoperability, we have to consider several aspects and there are two main mm -hmm. aspects. One is interoperability of the asset themselves. Mm -hmm. So it all related mostly to like rendering engines, the format of the file, mm -hmm. all that important uh, part. And another part of interoperability is a proof of ownership. And uh, there we come to the place, is it Web 2 or Web 3? Mm -hmm. Is it like um, that chain or another chain? Which protocol is that? Is there a breach? So there are two important mm -hmm. aspects here. And uh, without uh, both of them at the same time, there is no interoperability. Right. And there is no interoperability right now, mm -hmm. per se, in, in, in the world. <laughs> there are uh, attempts to build it, and I'm sure it will be happening, but uh, step by step. And how we envision it is, for now, we give an opportunity to wear different items in different spaces. Mm -hmm. It's not like you get one and you wear it everywhere. Sure. It's not like you know, it's not a white t-shirt which you can wear anywhere in yeah. the world, anytime, for any occasion, and just style it differently with something else. Mm -hmm. uh, it's early days yeah. of digital fashion and really like your identity is your mostly like total look and combining things, it's already kind of fun part and kind of advanced part. So for a lot of people, especially from the NFT world, PFPs is their identity, but yep. how we can take it further, right? Uh, today I was in a Twitter space and uh, part of the people was wearing PFPs yep. uh, as their pictures and part of the people are still wearing their photos. And it's like cool and uh, with digital fashion, you can actually, yes, dress up both of them and curate the image 
um, however you want to appear, but uh, really style it with, with this creative tool. And we give an opportunity to wear it in uh, meta avatar stories I mm -hmm. mentioned, in Roblox, in Zepetto, in Ready Player Me, in Decentraland. Um, sandbox is coming and um, augmented reality on the photos. I think it's not everything. Um, even like avatars created and does, mm -hmm. we did a beautiful, beautiful like outfits with that as well. So uh, content and bridges both are important. And um, I think it's bigger question for the whole industry and infrastructure to develop. Mm -hmm. um, but we are showing this vision and we right. are showing how it's gonna be like. All right, yeah, like I said, it's the early days. I'm sure five years from now, 10 years from now, like you, you buy one item and it can go with you wherever and maybe you yes. flick a button and a Web2, like essentially owned item turns into an mm -hmm. NFT. Um, we uh, build everything on a feedback loop from the client mm -hmm. and also we now have this expertise of what kind of outfits people prefer for different places. Mm -hmm. So when we launch something, we understand that, okay, maybe this will be great for a blog, but not amazing for AR or for like Zepetto, or we know that this item should work in Meta for sure. And um, yeah, that's how we distinguish which utilities we provide for which outfits. Right. No, and I mean, I, I remember we were in New York doing NFT NYC and like something I really liked that you said is like, I, I was asking like very uh, almost like definite questions where I was like, you know, are you approaching it this way or that way? And he said, you know what, right now we're collecting all the information and like we're figuring out, like we're, we're kind of like pivoting as we go. I think that my, my question was around like B2B or NFTs that we're trying all the different angles and we're seeing like where we're seeing traction, which, which I really like because it, like because we're so early that allows you to kind of like, you know, path correct and also like, you know, grow and learn. Um, you said you're taking feedback from clients. And so one of the interesting things about you guys is that you are both B2B and B2C. So maybe we can like split those two up. On the B2B side, you guys have worked with a lot of big brands. Recently, you guys did Coca-Cola, for example. What are some of the, I would love to know like both angles. On one side, the, the companies you work with, kind of like, what, what are they in it for? Like, what are they excited about? Is it, do they see the, the metaverse like as a hype opportunity, a marketing opportunity? Is it a way for them to connect to early, to younger audiences? And then for the people that maybe reject you guys, say like, hey, we're not in for digital fashion. What's the objections that you guys hear a lot? I think it's uh, definitely an opportunity to connect to the younger audiences, mm -hmm. as we uh, spoke a bit about already. It's also an opportunity for the marketing tool, but we definitely don't want fashion, digital fashion and fashion and digital to be perceived only as a marketing mm -hmm. tool because there is a revenue opportunity as we all saw how skins in the games were yeah. sold all of these years. So it's a huge market as billions of dollars for some of the gaming companies. So we definitely want to bridge fashion with those numbers mm -hmm. and not saying this is just another tool of how you can represents your brand for the marketing purposes yes it is but we can also like deliver revenue and that's mm -hmm. exactly what we're working on and that's why we're trying different things and understanding what will bring the utmost scale here yeah. and uh, what use case will be the simplest one and we definitely see the future for this vision of the meta closet and mm -hmm. that's exactly what dress X has become and is continuing to develop with this vision but obviously when the brands um, want to work with us being on the dress X ecosystem means that you are speaking to this new clients that mm -hmm. like perceive the brands from this digital angle and also obviously we sometimes work with other platforms as well by bringing brands there but what is more available for us is definitely to give them a vision of how they can be present in web3 with dress x and mm -hmm. how can they leverage from this notion of meta closet yep. and exactly like the partnership with coca-cola that you've mentioned it actually it was quite cool because you could uh, scan the bottle uh, like a special collection mm -hmm. by coca-cola and then you appear in the environment where there is like different things that you can see and one of them is your digital collection by dress yeah. x and then you go and you try on the things by the dress x app so that's actually another kind of way of how you can interact with coca-cola and mm -hmm. it's fun and cool and it's nice and i'm sure that every brand will continue to do things like that and especially with like big environments like dress X and big web two companies and web three companies there are so many opportunities for the brands of how they can be represented it's really innovative and it's something yeah. new it was never happening like 10 years ago in fashion and everyone is already tired of just digital ads you know you like all digital ads were already shown and invented and that's right it. <laughs> and, and, and now you're not just like drinking a coca cola you're actually experiencing something with them and if you can probably take a you can take screenshots and all of a sudden they got you know free promotion as well people saying hey you know i'm, I'm doing this and people check it out as well 
Yes, it's a medium and experience at the same time. So that's why it's like not only for the fashion brands, it's other brands like Coca-Cola can start their digital line. Right. But um, in terms of objections, um, where do you think people, where do, where do brands kind of like maybe miss the boat? What are they, what are some misconceptions maybe that you think they have? That they don't start now. They don't start now, okay. <laughs> yes, because I think it's important. The, the biggest uh, misconception of humanity is mm -hmm. not to try something <laughs> because we actually need to try some innovations right. and understand if it's the right timing for them or we should postpone. So, and the more we try, more we have like the technology being developed and more people will be in the industry. So we definitely advocate for all the brands to start now. And definitely we did see the objective two years ago when we spoke with the brands, but mm -hmm. now there is like no shortage of incoming requests of how to work together mm -hmm. and that's already a very interesting change in two years i wonder what will be and how we will respond to this question if we meet up in two years from now to do the same yeah. interview like what would be the scale of everything and, and, and do you think was it like facebook's move to meta was it like the the nft grace or was it that you know we had some brave early players that tried it out and it worked for them and people are saying hey the concept is proven let me try it too well, I think both of these factors were important and uh, now there is a little bit of cool down yeah. and people are like, oh, NFT scam, I heard something like, uh, but uh, that's good that for us it has always been about actually how you can wear it and right. this has not changed. And that actually proves uh, the longevity mm -hmm. and like utility of this technology in general and actually legitimizing all the, all the NFT world, which is uh, sometimes a scam as well, but uh, a lot of legit projects are there, of course. And um, yeah, speaking of um, backlash and a good kind of points uh, for adopting this technology, of course, uh, when Meta renamed the company, people started kind of thinking, okay, what is the metaverse? What is Meta? And uh, it's just uh, aligning on the language and uh, it's kind of explaining the use case um, because at the beginning when we just launched DressX, uh, maybe 30% of our orders uh, were delivered and then people would ask, wait, but where is my real dress? Oh. <laughs> and would say, oh, it's digital. But now, of course, um, there's no such questions. Mm -hmm. Everyone understands what's going on. Of course, back then we would take it as a compliment that it looks just like real, that it's amazing. But of course, we had to do a lot of this educational work uh, and uh, yeah, bigger events are helping. Yeah, that actually takes us to like the, the, the second angle of the business. And I guess the, the interrelated because even if you work with a, a brand, they have customers underneath them, right? So when on the B2C side, who is your demographic? Like, what is it like? What does it look like? Age-wise, gender-wise, like who who do you see buying, wearing, consuming digital fashion mostly? Uh, for us, it's mostly people based in the U.S. in okay. the United States, but that's because we're like doing mostly our business here. Right. But definitely in Europe, it's like Germany, for example, France is the country that uh, where we have users and UK active users uh, that are like shopping on some like recurring uh, basis. And uh, we definitely see this tendency for the millennials yeah. to use like BFPs and meta looks and augmented reality as well. Uh, because like younger generation, they're mostly even not on social media, but they're more in gaming slash social, mm -hmm. which is like Roblox, for example. Yeah. So that's where DressX is being discovered by that generation because we've really want for them to have this uh, kind of association that this is like dress acts is something with fashion if they don't know yeah. anything about the trends but then when they grow up a couple of years <laughs> they will come back to us and uh, they will continue to shop with us so it's mostly millennials it's uh, uh, there is a common kind of um, thinking that digital fashion is mostly for women mm -hmm. but actually like 40 percent of our customers are male wow. which is interesting but obviously like nft is more male dominated sure. industry but actually a lot of male are kind of pro innovation so they want to try something new and it looks cool and nice and we do have a lot of like sweatshirts is being sold and they're unisex yep. and for like example our collection in meta it's now more targeted for female users mm -hmm. and we have a lot of complaints from our male friends like oh my god i have just two options and it's two sweatshirts that i can wear here and all the rest is the dresses are the dresses so what can i do <laughs> so we that's talked what, about yes. this last night <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what we're changing for the next year drops for sure awesome mm -hmm. yeah i need my outfits you know so i can like I finally post pictures on instagram because i have the issue like I don't have time to photo, photo shoots, but I could do like one photo shoot wearing my black t-shirts exactly. and then just overlay new outfits every single week. Exactly. Um, 
and yeah, I mean, we already covered this. I was going to also, also mention, you know, the, the reason people buy, because, you know, there, I guess there's three different angles people could buy for, which is speculation, AR, or in-game. Um, where has been the most volume, you would say? Is it for things like Roblox, or is it more on the AR front? Well, if we look at how many try-ons of AR happened, of course, it's a huge number. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, some of the AR is distributed in different ways, uh, can be free, and then you get a meta look, and it can be paid, it can be part of the NFT utility. Uh, but when it comes uh, to, for example, Roblox, mm -hmm. it's like, of course, high volume of the items, and people changing the looks there all the time as right. well, and the price is a little bit more affordable compared to the NFT, which is unique, or compared to some meta look that is usually something like super crazy digital couture outfit. So, yeah, uh, that's... And, and I guess the time wearing your outfits is also much higher in something like Roblox because it's not just a single picture, but rather somebody's running around with a dress X sweater, um, you know, kind of, I guess, always highlighting the company. Yeah, however, when we, can, when we count uh, how much time you use your mm -hmm. profile picture, and oh, profile picture, like, of course. It's yeah, always there. Yeah, it's 24-7, yeah. right? Um, one interesting conversation we kind of like tapped into before we got going was, you know, I guess the relationship with like Meta and Apple. I know you guys also recently launched on the Meta Avatar Store, which um, curious how that relationship's f going into the future. You, you want to kind of dominate the Meta closet where people, everybody goes to dress X. Now there's also going to be a home a little bit with Meta. So what's the relationship there? Are they kind of competing? Are they too opposite? Can, I guess, items be transferred between them? And also kind of what's your overall take on like Meta and Apple stance recently on digital goods and NFTs and so forth? Mm -hmm. It's obviously amazing for us to be partnering with a company like Meta because mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to face a broader audience. Yeah. And now you can wear dress X items directly on Instagram, Facebook, Oculus, uh, starting like uh, beginning of December. And this is really huge. And obviously, uh, we want to be there and we want yeah. to continue to be there. And those companies are at certain point, to a certain extent, also like show what the market can be in the future right. because as soon as they uh, actually added an opportunity to connect your metamask to instagram it became obvious that now i can showcase my digital goods yep. on instagram which gives it another dimension of democratization and it's not all the people that know about it it's maybe like still few like fans and etc but it is already a movement towards the space which actually proves all of our ideas and proof the vision and etc now we all just need to scale as fast as possible and that's exactly what we're working on Apple is a very difficult company to comment on, right? Mm -hmm. We don't work with them directly. We're obviously present in the Apple store, yep. but there are a lot of pros and cons uh, about how things are there and how they tackle NFTs. Uh, but I'm sure that some of the new rules will exist. And I'm sure that in all of those companies, they do have Web3 departments that yeah. are kind of thinking about the future and how better to tackle that future because they also understand how much responsibility they have in their hands, yep. considering the amount of audience uh, they have on their platforms. But it's cool that the world is different. So someone will stay with Meta, someone will be on other platforms, and all these worlds will coexist, and we want to serve both. Yeah, That's the vision. And it's, it's, it's worth noting, too, like how much like over time big tech companies have adopted. Like I remember back in like 2017, 2018, PayPal would bet, ban anybody from like tr transacting with a crypto-related company. And then in 2020, they added Bitcoin payments, the Bitcoin wallets, right? Same thing with Venmo and Square. And then even social media, people would have never, I would have never imagined that, like, whether it is Instagram or Twitter, that they would integrate with MetaMask. Now you can connect your MetaMask to either of them, you know, and have a uh, NFT profile picture on Twitter, or you can post NFTs on your feed. And so I guess long term, if we stick with long enough, it does seem like the general trend will slowly get accepted and adapted. So... True. It's you know not 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 necessarily getting in the way. I'm curious. Um, actually, this is a this is a, this is a good segue into that. I one question I was curious since you're working with both Web two companies and you're in the NFT space, Web two versus Web three. What do you think can either worlds learn from each other? Well, I definitely Web three should learn a scale mm -hmm. from Web two and uh, the user experience. I'm quite sure everyone would be happy to buy things in one click uh, rather than going through multiple steps, connecting, mm -hmm. disconnecting, signing transaction, waiting, you know, um, I'm quite sure everyone would be happy uh, to have such an experience in Web3 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, if uh, we talk um, back uh, what Web2 can learn from the Web3, I think it's, uh, yeah, maybe just having this 
open-minded uh, approach and more inclusive approach mm -hmm. because uh, yeah there are a lot of uh, amazing solutions can be mm -hmm. built if there are more opinions right like almost a like community driven approach where they have really tapped in with their customers versus kind of top down absolutely how about you um, that's a, actually a very interesting question about Web3 and Web2, because in the end it will be somewhere like Web2.5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yes, I agree completely with Natalia about the scale, but I think that's the goal for Web3. But the thing is, it was just born like recently, yeah. so the simplicity of the product is not there yet. So like not everyone owns the MetaMask and etc. But because more and more people will adopt it, it will become simpler to use it. So it's definitely what Web3 needs to be also open minded about is about the scale, because yeah. sometimes they're like very into the groups, you know, it's like only 20,000 NFTs, no more, mm -hmm. etc. But actually, yeah, it's great to build luxury products, sure. but it's also cool when it's popularized and democratized. Uh, what Web2 can learn from Web3, I think that, like this luxurious execution of things, mm -hmm. like, like amazing assets and etc. like some of the PFPs they done incredibly well and mm -hmm. so beautiful. Um, and actually the innovation too, but I mean, what companies are we comparing? Some Web2 companies, they're so innovative yeah. that you can dive into what they're doing like snapchat that invented the entire augmented reality technology right. like they purchased a company and then they started to build uh, on it so this is something really cool so i think like the most interesting in this world when two like dimensions coexist and yeah. they started to learn from each other is definitely two different groups of people but now like people are merging from web 2 into web 3 and vice versa mm -hmm. which is also interesting one of the big concepts in digital fashion is fidgetal. And you worst, used the word earlier in the very beginning because like that was um, with your first pop-up stores. Fidgetal, for those that don't know, is physical and digital, right? Um, you've kind of stayed away from that. What's like your pro and con and why are you going for, I guess, pure digital? I think it's just the way how we started, because mm -hmm. definitely it was the biggest innovation back then two years ago that the store can exist without actually having any inventory. Yeah. And that was super cool and super interesting and the way to launch the company. But we definitely see a lot of future in digital. So mm -hmm. we can be a digital provider for the physical items. Yeah. Also, to be honest, like there are so many physical clothes mm -hmm. that are produced every year yeah, yeah, yeah. in the world that to keep one. producing <laughs> them, it's like maybe not that of an interesting decision, you know, right. because we need to understand how to sell better what is already produced so we should not produce even more of the items that wouldn't be sold and end up on the landfills and we briefly touch on sustainability but actually that's a very important pillar why dress X was born just mm -hmm. to give an opportunity to consume fashion differently because there are a lot of things that already exist in the world you can purchase them on the real real for example some of the pre-loved items as they call them or anywhere else and then in digital you can go crazy but your physical wardrobe can be like really consistent of the body suits or like something very easy to use right yeah so it's interesting approach you know for all of this plus one also is that you can really i guess break the laws of physics you know that like outfits are no longer tied to like what's possible but you can have you know almost like fantasy outfits that are, are not possible in the physical world exactly that's exactly what we did for this Balmain flame dress it mm -hmm. was a unique um, nft and it had it, and dress X provides the utility to wear it and it's a flame dress and we did the flame sneakers with buffalo and the fabricant absolutely um but uh, really digital is not only physical hoodie and digital ar for example mm -hmm. because you can be physical and uh, your AR outfit is digital. What is this experience? Is it digital experience or digital experience? So there is a kind of fine line, but what, why I like uh, this concept of digital? Because it's uh, a way to introduce mm -hmm. digital fashion and the way to show it to more people and the way to just explain the utility in a more clear way to the wider audience and this adoption is very important and that's why i really like this concept of digital but i think it's just a an iteration of the development of the whole industry mm -hmm. and it's like a trend and uh, there will be a lot of other trends i'm sure um when it comes to NFTs, I know because initially you guys didn't do NFTs. You're now with the new version of the app, you guys are integrating NFTs. What's some of the ups and downs you've seen with like working with NFTs? I know you already mentioned like you know friction when it comes to using MetaMask and Web3 and so forth. Um, 
But do you see? Do you think that in the future, like all your digital fashion items will be NFTs or more so? I think when uh, it will, there will no be distinguishment from the user experience mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, are you buying something? Is it an NFT or not? You will not even think about it. Right. You know, uh, then uh, probably everything will be an NFT. But I think it's a little bit in the future because. Uh, it's about the speed of the transactions and a lot, a lot of different aspects that uh, it's not only on us, but on a larger uh, ecosystems. Right. Um, yeah, so that's why um, I think uh, what we really enjoy is that you mentioned you can connect him at Musk to Instagram or Twitter, mm -hmm. but what you can do, you can just post, right? But you cannot take it further. And again, for us, this like utility is super important that you can actually wear it, that you can actually create something that you can also share. Uh, this is very exciting. and. Again, uh, how it can um, live um, in our kind of day-to-day -day life, not just when we buy and we forget about it and we are waiting what's going to happen, but when we actually interact with it on a daily basis. Right. Now that makes a lot of sense. What, what I'm, and I also think, you know, in the future, people are like NFT. Like people will be able to trace if they want to. Like if people want to validate, like is it actually scarce? How many are there? Is it actually mine? They can do so. But same thing goes with blockchain. I think everybody will interact with blockchain in the future, but they don't even know. And like they shouldn't, because like we do, most people don't know what TCPIP stands for. Most people don't know what SMTP stands for, but they use it every day. It's the internet and email, right? And so like you don't need to know those, that all the technological lift, nor, you know, put like, you know, even work with code or like, you know, work with a, you know, with a, with a wallet and affirm a transaction, set the gas fee and so forth. It's, you know, it's very 90s right now for crypto. Um, as we're in a bear market, you know, what building in a bear market? Couple, couple of final questions. What are some lessons and insights you would have? You know, um, obviously, you guys, you guys are really well funded. You guys have been doing incredible, and even now, you guys are one of the few companies that is actually growing. You know, for many of these quarters, you guys have been actually like you know making new records. Uh, yeah, uh, I think bear market is an amazing time to learn mm -hmm. and test new things, obviously. And as you mentioned, we're builders like we met a friend of ours today. And it was so funny because he was like asking, so what are you going to do today? And we're saying we go to we work to work. And yeah. he's like, Oh, my God, you're like people who work. <laughs> who actually <laughs> oh, <wow>. work. <laughs> yes, because sometimes in this space, you just meet people who like, great in uh, like presenting things right. and it's also a great talent Talks. but we actually <laughs> spend a lot of time in front of our laptops yeah. and thinking like how we can take it further and executing a lot of projects and not all of them work great like mm -hmm. there are some of them that we understand that's probably not the direction we should take now and maybe wait or etc maybe it's already per se so that's exactly the timing to try new things and to try to grow as fast as possible in terms of like community gifting we had we did an airdrop of the items to all of the um, uh, people who subscribe to our uh, marketplace when we were still building it. Yeah. And then we did this generative drop. We're still doing it. And actually, uh, by the time when the interview will be out, it's probably will be already finished. But anyway, and uh, there are a lot of things that we can test. So actually, like the bear market is amazing period for every industry because mm -hmm. you remember like Airbnb and some of other right. like innovative companies. 08, 09, yes, 10. yes. They were born when like things were in shambles. It's yeah. just because the creativity flourishes. And maybe sometimes uh, the abundance of money is not the best thing. <laughs> but I think bear market is not the scariest thing in the world. We started Dressex when pandemic started. Right. And then there was a war. We are both from Ukraine. Right. And now it's a bear market is not the scariest thing in it's the like world. It's like the death that's happened <laughs> in these two years. It's the bear market, actually. <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, tough times make it tougher. And so like you are able to like, stand those things a lot more. Um, one more question too, you know, you two are incredibly sharp, dedicated, driven, and you two are also two female founders. We don't have that many female founders in the crypto space, and I think we all would love to see more. Maybe what are some piece of advice you'd have for other female founders to like enter the space, you know, feel comfortable in the space and I mean, you'll, you'll see some of the success you've seen. To start now. <laughs> to start now, just like the brands. Everybody start now. To not stop. <laughs> yes, and definitely to work hard. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't know, it's like maybe a different scenario exists for different people, yeah. but uh, we kind of 
tried many things in life and yep. I think like hard work and dedication they really help when yep. you are very kind of uh, when you believe in your success but that should be proven by all the theories that you can try on a daily basis and you work again and again and again and we have a couple of friends whom we actually like they were interested in digital fashion but we brought them like kind mm -hmm. of and we all became more active because we were all in the space yeah. and uh, yes we're very happy to see some of our friends who are entering the space because we believe that better they would <laughs> than someone we don't know <laughs> yeah just uh, start now and don't stop and uh, honestly um, I would not I don't like to distinguish people much it's like male founders or like female founders uh, you just do great just, yeah. or you don't so that's the difference if we measure success we don't measure something else no 100 no and you, and you two always really impressed me i mean i've been following your journey for like a now i think a year and a half you know the first time and uh, I, I an ex golf was going through the app and i was like wow this is incredible she hates nfts but she is looking at digital fashion i'm like there's a real use case here and then i've been following the journey and you guys have gone from i think at the time you raised your first round you know um always on stages but also always building which you know is a rare combination i think there's a lot of builders that don't know how to really brand and market themselves and there's people that just do branding and marketing but they're not actually building anything and so um it's been really awesome seeing you guys' growth and journey and also really happy to be part of it now as an investor and i'm sure we'll get to that one billion items and not just one billion items i'd say one billion users dollars. Uh, on the platform <laughs> and dollars dollars <laughs> users everything <laughs> And so um, if people want to learn more about DressX or YouTube, what's the best way to follow? Well, the best way is to go to DressX.com or NFT.DressX.com and start wearing digital fashion, not just <laughs> listening about it That's right. or watching about it. And uh, yes, our emails, Daria Natalia DressX.com. We are on Instagram, DressX. We are on Twitter, DressX. <laughs> so, yeah. So there are a lot the of ways of way. how to connect and we we'll always try to interact with the community to answer. Yeah, and I think, yeah, the experience in digital fashion, even also the app, they can also download the app. This is something that can be done in iOS and Android. Right. So yeah, that's exactly what you've mentioned that your friend was doing that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just, just experiencing, because I think the moment you experience it and maybe even like go to the Instagram and see like how real some of these items look, it, I, I think that sells the idea more than anything. So yeah. glad to have you guys here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. you.